I'm excited to be here with Faith. Um, she is one of my favorite people to, uh, to, you know, content on Instagram is very entertaining. So, and on Facebook as well. So be sure to check out, of course, I will have links, but Faith is um, a successful business owner. She has a uh, six figure um, uh, young living oils business, and, which means that she uh, mentors a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people. She, she looks up to her for, for business, um, you know, uh, sort of leadership. And so I'm really excited to have her share um, her thoughts about productivity, joyful productivity, basically. But she, um, yeah, because, you know, uh, Faith has had the experience of building up a successful business, but also along the way, kind of like, you know, just like a lot of us have, have dealt with some burnout and then needing to find a way that's much more um, sustainable personally for her to keep going and to be able to show up with, with joy and with vibrance and creativity on a regular basis because a lot of people look to her. So Joy, thank you for being here. And I'm excited to have you share with, with my people. Hey, hi, hey, thanks for having me here. I'm so honored and grateful to be on your platform as well uh, to talk about stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, business is pretty exciting because I, I, I think it's very interesting the longer I'm in this business, right, the more I realize that maybe the way how women see business and entrepreneurship is so different from men, at least from what I understand when I speak to my husband because he runs his own business as well. And I think this has come to an age where for us women, we come into our own femininity, our own intuition and gifts as to how we create and how we grow our business with a lot of joy and purpose there too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I do definitely. We should we should talk about this. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is that not only are you a successful business owner, you're also a mother of two fairly young kids, um, and they're they're hilarious. They're they're wonderful because sometimes they they show up on on the videos too, and um, and it's it's a lot of work because you have to caretake for your kids, you 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 know for your husband for i'm sure there are other you know caretaking responsibilities in your life personal but you also have to caretake for all these people in your organization you know um and and on the side if that's not enough on the side you're also a coach uh you're also you know besides the young young living oils business you're also a coach for for women on these things about joyful productivity so the first question I have for you, there's so much we can talk about, but um, you, know, you, you talk sometimes about how we, as so many people assume that to succeed in business means it's a, it's a hard slog. You have to like suffer, uh, <laughs> you, know, you have to work hard and suffer so that you can become successful and then enjoy the fruits of your success. So you're trying to change that paradigm right so tell us about that like what is the what's the the alternative <laughs> and how can we actually make it work okay so to me right i guess for me right now in my current season of life i'm more about being sustainable in my business because if i'm on the thought that i have to like really squeeze myself and spring all the way to the finishing line I don't know whether my business will still be around today. I have done the other part before, whereby like the first few years of my life, I was definitely hustling and pressing and working hard, you know, doing the 18 hours kind of stuff every day and things like that. Yeah, so I think for me was that, um, I think it's very interesting that when I speak to women who yearns to get out of the red race, like in the corporate world, or having that time flexibility for the family, for themselves and for the children, I realized that the first thing they jump to when I asked them, would you consider building a business, would be that I have no time. So it's a very interesting statement there because already with that sentence, it really comes with a thought that there must be certain sacrifices to be made because usually for this woman, what I've noticed is that after saying they have no time, they will say that, yeah, my family and my work keeps me very busy. Um, so I'm always curious because I'm just wondering like what were the assumptions behind that you can especially right now in the social selling world especially right now when you can use social media to build your business to build your presence right it can you can take it as slow 
or as fast as you want. But the most important thing I feel is to create a journey that you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really good. Yes. And the journey that's enjoyable is one that we're more likely to keep going on. Right, like like the journey that's enjoyable is one where it um, brings out the best in mm. us. Like like if we're not enjoying it, we're probably not going to treat ourselves well. Number one, um, our self care, but also it won't we won't treat the people around us as well as we could if if we were enjoying it. Because then, um, with with the enjoyment comes a more of um a more creativity, more if I could just say love for other people and people can sense that, you know, people. Mm. So, okay. I, 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 I think this is important to talk about given that a lot of the women that you work with are building their business on the side, right? Like they're not, yeah. they're not going into business. Well, some people are lucky to be able to say, I, I have all the time, I have 40 hours a week to build my business. Most of them are just trying to squeeze out a few hours a week. Right. So, because you have so much experience with that and you're also a busy mother what is any any advice or any perspective about how do we find that time so what is your advice when someone says oh i would like to have my own business but oh i would like to grow my own business but i'm just so busy being a mom or or caretaking uh, for others or or be, being at work and i come home tired so how do we squeeze out some time well, I think that <clears throat> I think the first thing when I ask people to find the time, right, <clears throat> is really to have that daily schedule in front of them and have them to write in, okay, the things like the non-negotiables, right? So whether you're speaking to a woman who has a full-time job or even who's a full-time homemaker, uh, there are so much stuff women are, tend to be very busy with. So I get them to fill up those first, okay? Because usually there are pockets of time. It's just whether do you want to use those pockets for creating your business? Even half an hour a day is good enough. And, and I say that because I have been in seasons where... I just gave birth to my second child, so that's my son. And in the first six months, right, he was really sick, you know. And so what happened was that, and my second pregnancy has a lot of complications. I have preeclampsia, so there was a lot of medical um, complications around that and around my son as well. So for that one year, right, we were in a season that we don't have someone to help us to take care of our kids. It's just me and my husband full on board, 24 seven parenting with two very young kids. So it was impossible for me to even sit down for 20 minutes at my desk to work. It was really like taking my phone, say I'm gonna see my kid, right? So <laughs> I just text as I go. So the pockets of time can be found. Um, we just need to be intentional about it because some of the things I've noticed, especially for moms, what we tend to do is that sometimes life is so busy that we tend to check out quite a bit, like we scroll through social media, you know, watch our favorite Korean drama. So there are times that we check out. Um, and I'm not saying that you forego that and you go and slog your way through. I'm just saying that what if we just take maybe like half an hour, even 20 minutes, right? It's good to just take a little step here and there. Sometimes we just feel that this thing looks so daunting, but like how you taught us in TLC, when we break it down into tiny steps, it looks a lot more doable than, yeah. Yeah, and it's of course very helpful to have a coach or a mentor like you who's been there through all of the building a business while having really young children or just having very little time and energy that you were still able to build it successfully. And um, which is you know, really worth, worth studying. Um, and because some sometimes I, I hear people saying, well, okay, I have, a, I have half an hour to say 20 minutes that you said, I've got a pocket of time. But I hear people say, ah, what can I do in 20 minutes? What can I do in half hour? Why bother? Because What's kind of impact is 20 minutes or 30 minutes going to make? So um, what would you say to that? <laughs> what's, your, what's your response when they say that? Well, what's 20, 30 minutes going to do? Okay, so I have a perfect quote for that. So the question is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah. And so that's how it is. It's, it's not so much about like you 
pushing through and clearing through a huge chunk of work and one shot in a short while because I've seen people who really burn out after that, including myself. But it's really about consistency because as you build up that muscle of consistency and sustainability, the momentum kicks in, you know, the results snowbound. Um, there is a study by, okay, now I just suddenly can't remember the, the author. Is it Seth Gordon? He was talking about that. Uh, the tipping point. Okay, I probably would have misquoted him, but I think the one thing that I really found very interesting about the graph is that at so many points in that graph, right, we will want to give up. Like this is the valley of, oh my God, there's no results. Like, okay, you're posting on social media and there's no results. There's no one engaging whatsoever. But we just don't know when that tipping point is coming about. So to me is that, that's why I feel that having that pleasure in your journey before you got the results that you wanted, it's so important to have that to cheer you on and to have you carry on in this journey as well. Yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing that, that word, that idea in, to having the pleasure in the journey. So, okay, again, let's stick with a busy woman who has a half hour pocket every day, okay, to work on her business. What, what, what does it mean to to bring pleasure to that half hour pocket to, to build her business. So um, I, if you, if you want to give any specific examples, so let's say, you know, let's say one of your mentees has a half hour uh, later today, what would you advise her to do in that half hour and how might she bring some pleasure to it? Mm. So to me is that I found, I found this very interesting trait about my, <laughs> about women, including myself. We tend, okay, this is where I feel, okay, this is where I feel that men in this aspect is smarter than us about, so sorry women, but that's why I feel, and the, the, and the fact was that, <laughs> and the fact was that we tend to make things a lot harder for ourselves, mm, okay. yeah, than we should, you know, mm. and I'll give you an example, okay, recently I had one of my Dubai uh, team members, she came to me and said, hey, you know, I want to look at building the young living business, and like, great, okay, and she was like, okay, I'm going to talk to some enrichment centers, pull up advertisements about the young living products and whatsoever. And then she went, do we have this adverts? Can we shoot some? And I'm like, no, what you should do is that go to the company, pull out the existing videos they have because those have already been professionally done and it will apply. I mean, it's an easy, it's an easier way out, saves you so much time. So generally these days, when I work my business, I ask myself the question, how can I create more ease for myself? And I love the one that you also taught us as well, which is how can you half as your way through? Because <laughs> I often half as my way through right now. And, and I think that for women, maybe we feel that we needed to show up in work, like work hard, show your worth. But sometimes it can be as easeful as asking for help, asking for opinions, asking for resource, asking for network, rather than trying to pull that out from yourself first. Yeah. Mm, that's so great to hear you say that. And uh, yes, I believe very much in half-assing our way through because that's usually uh, how I've reached the success in my business too. And I think that's very interesting. You said that there is the women and men. And, and of course, I, I just want to say, um, we all have feminine aspects within ourselves. We all have masculine aspects, right? And some some women are are you know have have a harder time or easier time with this, and some men also the same thing. Um, but it, there is something about the feminine, which I think it's to me. Here's how I interpret it: I think the feminine cares for the whole more, cares for the holistically more, and so because of the care they see more connections or they feel more connections. And so therefore it feels a higher stake and they have to, they have to do it more perfectly. Um, uh, whereas men are like kind of dumb and go, Oh, I'm just going to, Oh, this must be easy. I just do it the easy way. You know? <laughs> or the masculine is much more like direct and just like almost like a, you know, a bowl in a China shop, just, you know, crashing through kind of situation. So I agree. It is, um, to, to be aware of that feminine or masculine uh, tendency. And when we are, when we have the half hour pocket, we just kind of need to half ass it, you know, or, 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 or at least to find that, just like you said, find the ease, find the, 
find the fun or ask for help and 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 yeah so this is really good so um another thing i want you to talk about is um using the same situation the woman with a half hour pocket of time uh say okay yeah faith i i am going to do some outreach you know uh i'm going to do it but but faith i i don't i don't feel i have confidence of doing it I, or i'm not motivated to do it right now so maybe i'll wait to later and maybe more motivated later or maybe later i'll feel more confident maybe maybe i'll um let me go get some more training uh maybe get the certification that certification then i will be more confident to 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 put myself out there uh what is your what is your thought on that um there is nothing like taking action you know towards your goal that instills and grows even more confidence okay and and i say that because i have been places especially early on in my business where i was terrible at showing up on live video i stuttered my way through in classes i had done things like poor lighting not being audible and being so serious that it scared people off on the screen okay so i've been through that and i think that i realized that the mere act of putting myself out there to do this stuff and getting and, and having patience and compassion for myself to get to mastery like right now, you ask me to come, come and say, can you jump about right now in this one hour to teach? I can, because I've done so much of this and basically just blush my way through to here that um, confidence is like, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need motivation to get there. I love what one of my favorite authors say. So her name is Sark, uh, S-A-R-K, Susan Ariel Rainbow Kennedy. And she actually created this thing called uh, Tiny Movements. And she was like, could you just do something around your dreams, just two minutes a day? So she gave the example of like say, let's say I need to clean up my cupboard behind me. It's a huge mess inside. And to put aside two hours to clean up feels very daunting. So the first thing you do is that on the first day, you open the cupboard door. The second day, you go to a cupboard and you see, oh, it's all my stuff there. The third day, take out two things to throw. These are small things, you no, know, so small, the steps, and it's easy. Everyone can do it. And I think that um, in terms of growing a business, it's, it can be about that. When we talk about confidence and motivation, right, it's not sustainable emotion. It is something that it ebbs and flows. Sometimes confidence and motivation comes from external uh, environment. Like someone tells you, oh, good job, you did so well in that. Or that you feel great about what you did. But it's not something that is constantly there. It comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. But for us to have the results that we wanted, consistency is a lot more important over here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for for you know, people. I hope you'll you'll watch this again because there's a lot of nuggets in this in this short interview. Um, yes, I totally agree with you that I too, you know, people people look at me and they they look at my videos and they see, oh, George has all the confidence and motivation. And he look, he shows up consistently. He must be motivated and confident all the time. And I I have to remind people whenever I click go live on Facebook to make my weekly videos, that moment, I am almost certainly not confident and not motivated. But I know myself by now that if I just click go live and start talking, that probably usually three to five minutes later, <laughs> I, I feel okay enough to keep going. It takes me, and same thing with my writing, same thing. I don't feel confident and motivated to write. That's been some of, one of my hardest lifetime lessons uh, because I, you know, I started learning English when I was, you know, in my formative years when I was, you know, Chinese. Anyway, so it's like I, I, I learned um, to be traumatized by writing early on. And every time I write, I still don't enjoy the first 15. I still, I'm not motivated. I'm not confident in the first 15 minutes, but I just keep trying. I try. And I love your example. Oh, open the closet one day, <laughs> you know, yeah. next day, look at the, look at the items. You know, I think that's brilliant. And the same thing with my writing. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to write an award-winning essay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to open a blank document. Okay. I could do that. Okay. Next thing I will just write one thing about the topic doesn't have to, one crappy thing about the topic just one sentence that's okay or whatever it doesn't, doesn't have to be sense one thing okay let me write one more thing <laughs> and it just it keeps going like oh 
I have one more thing I could say, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is, this is, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that you're, you're sharing this message. So um, as we start to conclude, I, I also want to ask you about um, when, when, okay, same idea, the woman who has little time, uh, she's building her business. It's still not to the place where she wants it to be. Okay. Yeah. So how do we stay encouraged to keep going when we're just, especially when we're just starting now, some people who are watching are just starting and some people watching this are somewhere in the middle, but they still are, they have a big dream. Maybe they see the very successful people like you, Faith. Oh, look, it's so wonderful to have a six figure business, but I'm, I'm very far from it. It feels, how do we, how do we stay encouraged? How do we keep going? I think one thing that I found really helpful in this is that um, it's also something I'm learning from you as well. And I'm doing this like every Sunday was to do a weekly review. So my weekly review has been very simple. It's just basically first thing, what are some of the things that I'm celebrating about for the week that has just passed? The next one is that, okay, but some stuff that I can see that is coming up for me is growthful areas for me, areas that I can choose to grow into. And the last thing is that what is, my affirmation or my intention for the coming up week. Like it can be just a word, it can be a sentence to anchor myself to that. And the reason why I talk about this is because um, typically I find that we are very hard on ourselves. So much, so often the things that we do do, we go like, it's just a small thing, nothing worth mentioning. But it is something, it is something worth celebrating. And, and I learned that from my husband when he realized that I was so hard on myself in the early part of my business. Like if I didn't get to my goal, to my certain rank, with certain time frame, I get really hard on myself. And I start to dash myself up repeatedly for what I did not do well. And he was like, but wait a minute, you haven't seen what you have done so well. You haven't do that. And the thing is that if I don't practice that, my kids will not practice that because they see their mom doing that. Neither will my team members too, because that creates a certain kind of culture, right? So to me, it's like, I actually invite every single entrepreneur out there, if you are feeling discouraged, if you're feeling that, nah, I'm not there yet, ah, you know, sit down, write down three things. What's three things that you've done that's worth celebrating? And even in the stuff, right, it's not in the business achievement. Maybe it's in your fitness. Maybe it's in your parenting life, your family life, write that down because everything is together. You, we can't, I mean, much as we like to, but I don't think we can actually say this is business and it's segmented so much away from the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. It's um, a sense of fulfillment and sort of like personal empowerment that just like you said, when we do the things that you mentioned, we increase that feeling within us, the feeling of, yes, look, I'm, I can do something. I'm, I, I'm contributing, you know, and that feeling spills out into the rest of our life too. I so appreciate your, that, that exercise. That's very good. Well, let, let, let's talk a little bit about um, your coaching. Uh, some people watching this would be like, oh my gosh, I would love to have faith as a coach. Um, you know, she's, she understands uh, what it's like to, to have little time and, and to, to do without the hustle mentality of, you know, work until our eyes bleed or something like that. So someone who wants to work with someone like you, who's brings, you know, joy and fun into business and, and to do it in very doable ways. How do you enjoy working with clients? Um, or maybe I could ask you, what, what is the ideal type of client that should contact you? Okay, so for me, right, I'm, after been going through my journey of burnout and everything, I'm very passionate about reaching out to like-minded women out there. So if you are a woman who is like, you could be starting a business or even in the midst of it and you're feeling discouraged, overwhelmed, or you've been through a series of setbacks, um, burnouts or so, and you're just thinking, where can you go from here? You're feeling stuck. You feel like giving up. I would strongly encourage you to reach out to me. So my Instagram handle is faith at flow, faith in flow and on Instagram. So reach out to me there. I mean, just, just dropping me a simple DM and we can always have a chat. 
uh, to me, I'm just feeling that this is an age where I think for us women to kind of like to step into our own power. And I, I truly believe that entrepreneurship is one way that we can do that, actually. So I would love to connect you there. Mm, thank you for that. I will, of course, put the link to the Instagram, your Instagram profile um, below the video. Uh, and let me, let me ask you one more question and then we can end. So let's say some, well, first of all, um, if someone interested, you know, they'll, they'll direct message you, um, but let's say they get started working with you um, as a client. Uh, any, give us a little bit of a picture on what you would start to work with them on. I know it depends on the person, of course, but any, anything you find important to start with and then, you know, uh, or, 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 or what kind of technique do you use, that kind of thing, mm. anything to share, yeah. Okay, so professionally in my back, in, in terms of my certification background, I am certified as a master practitioner in neuro linguistic programming. I'm also certified as the neuro linguistic anagram practitioner as well. So I am trained in terms of using the anagram as a diagnostic tool. I basically use quite a few tools and it depends on what the person resonates with as well. But one of the key things that I start people on is actually to look at doing the thought model because so often the actions that we take is based on a feeling that we get that is based on a thought that we have so and, and so often we are in the space that we believe our own thought we think that they are true they might not be true it's just our opinion but having a certain thought shapes the way how we feel shapes the action we take you can take an action where it goes like um let's say reaching out let's say net caring reaching out to people on ig and you know creating that relationship right you if you have a thought that goes like oh okay fine let's do it today and you know if by having that thought what kind of feeling do you get of course you feel like dread okay let's get that over with Definitely the way how you reach out to people will not be something that, I mean, it could be, but I just feel that the energy will drag the action down, you know, and your, and your words will be like, okay, let's just get die over with so I can get to the next thing that's more interesting for me. But if we have, if we look at our thoughts and we pick the one and say like, hmm, what if we could find someone that we really love the content about, like, like for George Carl, right? And then we go like, it is so amazing to connect through that way. So imagine when you have that thought, the feeling what you get, you get excitement, you get like, yeah, or even curiosity. So of course, the action that you take and further down the line, the result that you get would be different because your energy has shifted a bit. So that's a key thing that I also teach my clients about to do that. That is so important because that's one way to coach ourselves through situations that we have blind spots too. Yeah, then after that, what I could do is to take people through the anagram to have a, deep, a deeper dive on their blind spots, how they show up when they're stressed. And also like a lot of times we don't realize that when we are stressed on our alignment, we are thinking certain thoughts, but the way how we show up to people out there is very different. You know, and that cause that can create miscommunication, misunderstanding, and misalignment too. So that's an interesting tool that I like to use for my clients as well. Yeah, I love that. I, I I'm a I'm a fan of the Enneagram as well. I think it's a really profound tool, and it's so great that you uh, you you work with your clients on that. Um, and yes, I totally agree that the thought. I love it. I love that you you emphasize that in your work with clients because if we learn better, more effectively, how to manage this, the rest mm -hmm. of our life changes. And that's like the highest leverage benefit you can bring to your clients. So thank you for that work. Well, Faith, um, I think people are lucky to be able to work with you. Uh, and I hope uh, anyone who's watching this, you, you know, feels connected to what Faith is saying and, and uh, reach out before, while Faith is still available. <laughs> so, um, you know, check out the links below and Faith, thank you. Thanks for the work that you do. Thanks for having me here. Thank you.